So next up, we have uh, really a, a session that I'm really looking forward to um, to working with here. Uh, Sai, would you like to join us? And, and we're going to have most of our participants uh, on this panel uh, joining us virtually. Karen, is this a, are you going to intro this or are we all teed up? Okay, good. So this is, um, we've worked hard with our friends from FGDC, NGAC, um, and OGC. And it's really around uh, the GDA implementation, the Geospatial Data Act. Um, so we will fire that off uh, if everyone's ready online. Are we ready to go? Yes. Give you this mic, sign. and you can use this one, and I'll use this one. Yes, do we have slides? Coming up. Great. You are. Good, good news. Good. Yeah. Do you want me to share the slides on my end? Um, if you'd like to do that, you can. Emily, Whatever is, that is easier. Yeah. Whatever is easier. Yeah. We'll go yep. with the floor. Yeah, go ahead, Nadine. Thanks for being here with us. Thank you for having me. So let's see. I want uh, this slide. Share. Let me know. Can you see it? Yes, we can. Thank you. Super. And do we have Mark on the line? I saw you, Mark. I am here. Hello. And Ivan. I saw you, Ivan, too. Yep, I'm here yes. with you. Perfect. All right. So do you want me to start, uh, Frank? Please. All right. Um, so first of all, you know, good afternoon from Washington, D.C. I'm Nadine Alame, the CEO of uh, OGC. And I'm very happy to be here for many reasons. Maybe I'll list three. I'm happy to participate in a NISTIC annual meeting. Uh, it's my first meeting, even if it's remote, I will take it. And hopefully we do it in person next time. Um, reason number two, I'm very happy because, uh, you know, um, the MOU means so much to us, uh, this collaboration with NISTIC. Uh, I love that we actually collaborated before we signed the MOU. Um, that's what Frank said, it was a deliberate, uh, collaboration and uh, to have it around the Geospatial Data Act gives it uh, so much more meaning to all of us, uh, as you will hear today. And I'm, my third reason is I'm very excited because I'm joined uh, for this, uh, you know, the next 45 minutes by an amazing, humbling team of presenters uh, who really need no introduction. Uh, so Frank Winters and Cy Smith, they're on the stage, they're no strangers to you, so no words there. Um, Ivan Deloitte is joining us virtually. Uh, he also needs no introduction as the FGDC Executive Director. And Mark Reichert is joining us also virtually, um, also needs no introduction in this community as he's the retired uh, OGC CEO. And um, he, Mark could not, um, or he can't stop himself from just following his passion of supporting OGC strategic initiatives. And he's also the chairman of the National Geospatial Advisory Committee, the NGAC, amongst many things he's doing in his retirement. So together, this team um, uh, got together. So let me forward uh, my slide. So this team got together and convened the community around the GDA. Uh, opportunities in GDA compliance from the federal perspective, opportunities from the federal perspective and also from the private sector, opportunities for improvement for partnership. And today, uh, we don't want to uh, just share with you uh, the intent and the outcomes of our collaborations so far in the forms of workshops. We actually uh, would love to hear from you on the opportunities you see coming from your perspective, your state, your local, regional, tribal. We want to hear it all. 
Um, so the agenda, so uh, it's going to be as follows. Um, I'll take a few minutes uh, to tell you why OGC is doing this. Frank will tell you why he's doing this on behalf of NISCHIC. Uh, and then we'll invite Ivan to the stage to really set the stage <laughs> with respect to the latest and greatest on the GDA from Washington, DC. Uh, Sai and Mark will then follow up to share uh, quick highlights of where we are today in terms of the dialogue, right, with the community. And then the fun begins, or maybe that's when the real work begins. What's next? So if that sounds good, let's do it. All right. Uh, so here's my quick why. Uh, this is how we started also the uh, GDA workshop back in June. Um, I'm here because uh, it's 2021 and we can fly this amazing helicopter, uh, you know, on another planet that's 33 millions of miles away. It's beyond fascinating to me. Uh, but then when I go back to Earth, and even if you put COVID and the pandemics aside, here in the United States, which is a developing country, we're not even talking about, um, which is a developed country, we're not even talking about the developed nations, uh, developing nations, but even here in the US, um, people actually still die. They still get displaced. They still suffer from disasters. Um, and sadly, disasters that are increasing year after year, not just in frequency, but in costs, uh, lives, money, you name it. And it's also 2021. And even again, I go back, even in the US, people still die, get injured from hitting underground infrastructure during projects. Also, the, 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 the dollar cost in billions and hundreds of billions, actually, on the US economy. And uh, just reading it quickly here, 400 to 800,000 incidents here in the US of underground utility damage during construction projects. And this is why I'm here because I ask myself why. Um, we're all experts here, we're all passionate. So why do we still have these painful examples in 21? And what I see is from the OGC perspective, right, that despite our best efforts uh, and our collective experience, geospatial information is not quite as findable, as interoperable, as accessible, as reusable as it needs to be. So really findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable, fair. Uh, it's not as fair as it could be Actually, it's not as fair as we know, you and me, we know it could be, right? And I think that's why OGC is here. That's why we're collaborating with NISCIC and beyond uh, because we wanna solve this problem. We wanna help. We wanna be part of this collective problem solving community. And we wanna share or you know, be able to represent some of the insights and the best practices in the form of standards, in the form of best practices, or even leave behind tools and software and you know, decision support applications, you name it. So the GDA is a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity for us because it, it is the formal recognition, I think here in the, in the United States of the essential role of geospatial data. And it's an amazing driver for accelerating our efforts or converging our efforts towards fair access to geospatial information. So very happy to, he to be here with you on behalf of OGC. Frank, why are you here? All right, I will point at you when we're ready to um, advance the next slide if you we'll pick up a visual cue, cue there. So back by popular demand, I'm 10 Pine Street. This is the story of me, a humble address. I was born when a, go ahead, Nadine. Uh, I was born when a, uh, a field was subdivided and an address was assigned by a local government. Then the county got involved in the apportionment of uh, land for taxation and I became part of the county tax map. Then funded by a, a grant funding from the NTIA, 
through the Department of Commerce for broadband mapping, we pulled together me and 9 million of my brothers and sisters into a statewide collection of address points for the purposes of broadband mapping, but also for the purposes of provisioning broadband, I'm sorry, of uh, uh, 911. And that 9 million address points collection was so useful to the 911 coordinators that across the state, they all agreed to interact with us and maintain that. Not a week has gone by in 2021 where New York State team has made fewer than 5,000 edits to streets and address. Last week, the team made 13,000 edits. And how do you make 13,000 edits with a team of eight? For addresses like me, 10 Pine Street, you don't do it with a team of eight, you do it with 200 partners who see the value. They see the value partly because that data then is returned to them in the NINA standard Go ahead. And when it came time to count our people, the 2020 census, we had a collection of addresses. We wound up, myself, 10 Pine Street, and all of my brother and sister addresses wound up uh, counting 700,000 more people than expected in New York State. What is even more exciting is that I come together with my brothers and sister addresses from across the country into the national address database. And that is the location where partners, uh, NISJIC partners and uh, companies really scale my impact by, by putting that, um, putting me in the smartphones and in the in-vehicle navigation devices of, um, of the citizens. So that's really where I feel like my impact is scaling. So go ahead, go ahead. And when the owner of the house at 10 Pine Street called uh, 911 with chest pain. It wasn't a fancy computer aided dispatch system that got that driver to me, 10 Pine Street. It was the phone they use um, to navigate all the time. So it turns out that chest pain was just my owner having a, um, too much of a, a bratwurst sandwich and everything was good. But nevertheless, the address was found. Think about what happened to me, 10 Pine Street. I initiated in local government, county government got involved when it came to parcels. State government aggregated that data. Federal agencies pulled together um, that data uh, into a national collection. The major not-for-profits, Nina and NISJIC, got involved and provided their value. Commercial companies then got involved and provided their value and got that uh, got me, 10 Pine Street, to, their, to the citizens, um, out to the public where it scales, and then all the way to volunteer fire company and, and ambulance. This. I believe is what the GDA is, is put in place to assure, ensure happens. This is a picture of a piton. In the 70s, rock climbers around the world were pounding pitons into cracks and clicking the ropes in, and this is what they used for protection. Worldwide, the rock climbing industry determined that they were damaging the routes that they enjoyed and they were changing all of these routes. Um, so, Worldwide, without any legislation, the entire worldwide rock climbing industry changed to non-destructive protection devices. And these are flexible friends. People made some money selling all this stuff for sure. But there's an industry that's self-regulated and they did the right thing for the right reasons. Now the GDA is giving us the opportunity and the mandate both to work together. We can go beyond the GDA and we can celebrate the fact that we get to work together and we get to collaborate. And we'll, there'll be more on what we have got to do versus what we get to do um, later in the agenda. So that's why I'm here, so we get to do this. Fantastic, I try to keep up with you, Frank. <laughs> you're, you're very small on my screen, so it had to be big, big arm movements, but- You did uh, fine. <laughs> Got it, thank you. Um, Ivan, do you wanna you know, share with us uh, you know, your perspective, uh, where we're at, at in the GDA and you know, uh, what you think of this collaboration and the steps forward, please? Well, thank you, Nadine, I'd be happy to. And uh, first and foremost, I wanna thank um, NISCIC and OGC uh, for organizing this session and also my distinguished panelists for participating in the session. I think it's very important 
and critical for all of us um, in the geospatial community. Uh, the GDA, I think, as we all recognize, provides a, a mechanism and a framework for collaboration. And I think we're going to hear a lot about that um, this afternoon. And um, I also resonated with Molly's comments about um, being in person. Um, I can recall a lot of those late night sessions in the hospitality suite where a lot of great ideas were hatched. And I think uh, those sessions were more productive, I think, than some of the uh, the other conference activities. But you know, we look forward to getting back together so we can continue to, you know, to have those opportunities. You know, as we look at the GDA today, it really um, solidifies, I think, the importance of geospatial data and technology in our community. And even more importantly now, uh, as we deal with this pandemic and we're working remotely. So, the, you know, the power of geospatial information and answering that where question, I think, is even more critical today than it has been in a very long time. Um, as we continue to move out on the implementation of GDA, there are a number of products that we've developed that I think will be helpful for all of us to, to take advantage of. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we did um, develop an issue, a report to Congress uh, that was in two phases. And I would envision that being a tool or a document that our colleagues in this could use in their visits to the Hill once those are reinstituted. And I know Sai uses those quite a bit um, in his, um, his travels and his conversations with people throughout the, co the community. Uh, we've also done a lot of um, annual reporting um, from the agencies on conditions of data, but also uh, the working environment by which they're, they're um, using geospatial information. Again, uh, while reporting can be a bit of a burden sometimes, I think it really gives us an opportunity to, to tell the, the good news story about how they are able to support their mission responsibilities and be able to support um, a lot of the challenges that we're having with the American people. Um, as we think about um, our NSDI strategic plan, one of the key components there is governance. And I think we all have recognized over the years that a shared governance is needed. Uh, the question is, how do we do that in an effective manner? And how do we do that in a way that we all have the, an equal vote at the table? And we've had these conversations over a while, over a number of years. And the question is, how do we get real creative and innovative in how we, we take on such an activity? And then lastly, not lastly, one other area is standards. Um, that's why we're really pleased to, to see more active engagement um, with OGC and NISTIC uh, in this area as we think about a national approach for standards development. Um, typically, we have done this internally within uh, the federal sector, but as we think about the requirements in the GDA, uh, I think it's time now to think about a national approach for two reasons. First and foremost, uh, having a broader set of ideas at the table typically results in a better, um, a better result. And secondly, uh, as you think about implementation, um, it's much better to have those folks who are working at the ground level involved in the conversations and, and, and suggesting ideas and opportunities on how to develop the standards. So, so we're happy about that. And then lastly, uh, in my conclusion, we have been working quite feverishly over the past several months and developing a report on a federal mapping service for for climate change, uh, climate resiliency, and climate planning. Uh, and that cannot be more important now as, as we listen to the president's comments today at, at the UN where he's He's speaking to the world about climate and the need for us to be more actively engaged, not only within the United States, but globally. So we see a role uh, with the GDA and the FGDC in developing such a federal mapping service that's not only about federal data and activities, but the charge is to make sure that these tools and applications are applicable for those folks on the ground, specifically our state, tribal, and local governments. So developing that governance structure and involving folks in those activities is gonna be an important step as we move towards implementation. So I'll conclude my, my remarks there, and that's why I'm here because there's a lot going on and a lot of opportunities for all of us, but um, I'm really um, encouraged by the fact that the GDA provides that collaborative framework by which we all can, can be involved. Thank you. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you so much for your support and your leadership. And we have a long road uh, ahead of us here. Uh, that's why we need as many, you know, hands on the table, on the deck or whatever analogy, right, Frank? 
Um, so um, uh, can we pass it over to Sai? So Sai, you had a few slides um, to summarize uh, the conversation that we've had today, uh, to date on, from the federal perspective. And I know it's weird that we're splitting it, federal industry, it's really one, but we have to have a framework to have this conversation. So if you can start us off with the federal perspective and then Mark can join you and talk about the industry and then we bring them all together at the end. Sure, sounds good. If you want, want to pull up that slide, there we go. So can you also make big hands, arm, arm movements, not hands, so I can see you. <laughs> make big arm movements to have a slide of hands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, you're, the speakers are in front of me, Nadine, so I'm uh, kind of struggling to hear you, but everybody else can hear you fine, I think. So these are the um, federal GIOs and actually one CDO that we had at this session. Uh, Tony Lavoie is the chief data officer for NOAA, and then we had Steve Lewis, who you, most of you all know, David Carter with uh, Interior, Rob Shankman with Health and Human Services, and Mike Donnelly with Homeland Security. I'm going to go through these. I've got two or three slides about the, uh, you know, kind of summarizing their input. I'm gonna go through that pretty quickly. I've got just a couple of things to say and then uh, pass it off to Mark so that maybe there'll be a few minutes for you guys to uh, say some things if you have uh, comments. Um, and I probably won't read through every, everything here. There's no reason for me to read this to you all. Um, most of you can read better than I can. <laughs> um, but, you know, the, that first bullet, uh, I think is a really important one. Um, and that was something that Tony Lavoie said um, early on in the session, that the, it's recognized. I think you heard Ivan talk about this just now, too. The NSDI will only happen through partnerships. That's a key element in the Geospatial Data Act. Uh, it's in the Geospatial Data Act four times in different ways, in four different places. It's really key. Um, there's, a, there's some coincident. That was not a large hand movement. This is a large hand movement. <laughs> just teasing uh the uh i gotta keep my hands down the uh there's some coincident uh the coincident um there are some other acts that were enacted and the evidence act is one of the key ones where there's opportunity for alignment from the cdo's perspective uh and the gio perspective but the cdo's in particular there's a cdo council now that was created by the evidence act and alignment with those folks is, uh, you know, is key to our success. So uh, there's real opportunity for that. Um, focusing on the importance of geospatial data and standards is a key part of the GDA. Um, and then opportunities for public-private partnerships, which is definitely something that um, NGAC is working on. Okay. Um, there's some recognition at the, and you heard this again from Ivan, that a national spatial data infrastructure should have a nationally focused governance structure, not just federally focused. Um, the opportunity for that is, is on the table in front of us right now. Um, standards haven't been consistently implemented nationally. Um, keeping the bar for participation in developing national data sets as low as possible by defining a minimum viable product with as few attributes as absolutely necessary. I thought that was an interesting note that came out in the session. I'm not sure exactly how to react to that, but um, it was part of what folks brought up. Next. Um, opportunity and necessity to create. So somebody remotely is operating these slides, not somebody in the room, right? It's Nitty. That's why she wanted me to make, okay. I just got that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was waving at somebody out here. I'm thinking, Emily, what the, you know, <laughs> come on. <laughs> All right, sorry. Uh, opportunity and necessity to create a data inventory, uh, really key uh, element. We certainly don't have that now. Um, collectively and collaboratively addressing policy issues that have inhibited data sharing, uh, you know, big task, but uh, needs to be done. Uh, engaging users and decision makers at all levels in all sectors to make the NSCI valuable and useful to all. The key element here in terms of a governance structure is that all the sectors don't have an equitable seat at the table. So the NSDI means nothing to most of the county assessors in the country. That's why we don't have a national parcel data set um, that developed, you know, an authoritative parcel data set. The same can be said of city and county planners for address points um, across the board. So 
And then uh, another comment that was made was uh, data licensing may be a good approach to resolving some of the sticky policy issues. Uh, it has to be as easy as software licensing to be workable and somebody made that analogy. Next slide, Nadine. And then I thought I'd go down a level in font size just to make it more challenging. Um, so we have to balance the risks associated with broadly sharing data and the economic benefits of such sharing. There is a balance to be attained there. Uh, opportunities for going forward for federal agencies to purchase commercially produced data sets of value as part of the NSDI, but making those publicly available through open license agreements. Uh, there's a couple of examples of that happening, but um, you know, if we're gonna go down that path, that's a key element. Uh, and then moving toward a national governance structure could involve giving non-federal stakeholders a vote in decision-making and perhaps having a revolving chair as leadership in committees and subcommittees. I think that was a pretty interesting um, idea that was brought up. Um, and it's possible that some aspects of the NSDI could be governed collaboratively under existing law, while some aspects can't. And um, they didn't really elaborate too much on that, but I think that's probably right. I think that was my last slide. Yeah, that was my last slide. And I just had, you know, one or two comments here. Um, there were, my name was invoked a lot uh, this morning already, uh, probably a little more than I was comfortable with. But, uh, you know, it's not up to me to make this stuff happen. It's up to us to make this happen. And the opportunity has never been greater. I know some of you have concerns and criticisms regarding the Geospatial Data Act. I've heard that. We heard that when we were trying to get it enacted. We did everything we could to get it enacted, and it was really tough. You know, the president pro tem of the United States Senate had to call in favors as he was retiring and heading out the door and really making some significant maneuvers to get it across the finish line. So we couldn't have done more than what we did, but you've heard today uh, and you will hear more, there are opportunities to fix some things. Now's the time to act on this, to get the GDA amended. Uh, the timing has never been better. I believe that the governance structure is the highest priority for that kind of an amendment. Um, there may be some other things that we need to do and we certainly wanna hear those and talk about those, but having a law on the books to amend is a lot better place to start than where we were uh, in 2015, 2016, 2017, when we were just trying to get some place to start. So I think we're in a better position. Mark, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Sai. And the next slide, please. So uh, I moderated a session with a number of industry representatives. And before I start with a summary, I just wanted to point out that um, the comments that were given at this first workshop were provided in advance. Uh, and I, the reason I mention that is because you're going to see a lot of uh, overlap and consistency of comments between the industry and the public sector players. And I think that's a huge opportunity, uh, just adding on the size of comment. Uh, in the session, we had Holly Howard from uh, Google, Josh Gelbard from Amazon, focusing not on uh, Amazon Web Services, but on Amazon's core business uh, of delivery uh, products and services. Pat Cummins from ESRI, Kumar Navular from Maxar Digital Globe, Richard Kelly from uh, 911 Data Master, Ryan Bank from the Geospatial Insurance Consortium, and Robert Hoyler from TomTom. Tom. Next slide. So the comments, uh, I won't dig into all of these bullets, but I'll just characterize them. And I think you'll see immediately some overlap. Holly's, I think one of her poignant comments was she sees the GDA as the North Star for public data infrastructure. And that public data infrastructure sets the foundation for creating interoperability and partnerships with the private sector. Um, she believes that uh, the sharing of core data sets uh, between the public and private sectors is absolutely an, an imperative. Uh, and we need to tackle the issues of um, making open licensing and open data freely available. She also mentioned that there's opportunities on the standards side, not only to adopt consistently at a national level what's already been endorsed and available, uh, but to work across government to uh, further integrate some standards uh, that could make it even easier for data sharing, such as point of interest and work zone uh, standards that she provided as an example. 
uh, our Amazon representative really underscored real-time data and what I consider to be non-traditional data to be part of the national spatial data infrastructure. Of course, they're worried about delivering on time. They're worried about making sure that uh, new construction and other types of recent events are incorporated into the data sets. And uh, they're, they're uh, very much aware and sensitive to the fact that much of the addressing uh, challenge that they have is indoor. Uh, so I think Amazon's comments were really, really um, useful and productive and driving towards that aspect of real time and non-traditional data being part of the NSDI going forward because it benefits both government and the private sector. Next. Uh, Esri uh, talked about moving from just data access and discovery to informed decision making uh, with a heavy emphasis on public private partnerships and national governance. Uh, to improve uh, everything from discovery to use of that information and the acceleration of uh, technology innovation for our sector. They also talked about the need for open data licensing and open standards uh, as uh, did our previous speakers to further enable access uh, uh, as well as standards. And then um, underscoring the need for a national governance model and to go with that a unified advocacy approach and ESRI is working uh, hand in hand with the government to help to provide multiple pathways to some of the national geospatial data assets uh, by serving those up uh, in addition to government uh, doing the same. Maxar had a real focus on um, policies and frameworks to better cause national consistency uh, in the way in which data sources can be uh, aligned and integrated. Uh, but also just to make sure that standards are being used uniformly across all players. Um, integrity and trustworthiness was another issue that they had, uh, uh, they wanted to raise as an opportunity for the community to work on uh, and a focus on education for application of analytics and uh, artificial intelligence. Next slide. From a public safety and 911 perspective, uh, Richard talked about national data hubs. And I see this as moving out of the federal space and truly up to a national level to make this data available uh, to everyone and anyone who needs it. Um, automation, further increasing automation to deal with error reporting, uh, security and provisioning of the data, and then streaming based, uh, using open standards so that the data is not constantly duplicated and, and becoming stale locally but being served up from authoritative sources. And the importance of really moving as quickly as possible to a true 3D environment uh, for not only operational services, but for safety planning and response. Ryan Bank from the Geospatial Insurance Consortium talked about the real need to take a hard look at, it, at leveraging existing imagery libraries uh, to provide resources and capability for others rather than doing more collects uh, or duplicating uh, continental-wide or larger data sets, uh, really focusing on how do we better share um, high-resolution data uh, in a way that benefits more than just those who have initially arranged for it. Standardizing imagery so that regardless of who's collecting, uh, that imagery can be used, it's accurate, and it can be optimized for applications uh, in analytics, AI, and ML. And then really emphasizing public-private partnerships as a way to share costs, reduce duplication, reduce the time it takes to collect and uh, purpose this uh, information for use by the community. Next slide. And then we ended up the discussion with Rob Hoyler from TomTom. Tom, and uh, this was a really, I think, an appropriate discussion. He talked about public-private coordination and collaboration and public-private partnerships but he did so in the context of discovery. He said that one of the things that we need to learn to do because long-term arrangements are full of risk and reward and the more that you can educate yourself on, on business relationships between government and the private sector, the better off you are. He talked about piloting and taking small steps to learn, understand and find the right fit for different business arrangements so that long-term arrangements can be built, can be solid and can be lasting. And he uh, coined that as preliminary perspective public-private partnerships. And so um, if we could go to the next slide, to sum it up, there were some really key points here. Um, a heavy, a heavy uh, emphasis on national governance, public-private collaboration and partnerships, real-time data and non-traditional data, 
uh, and uh, different aspects of moving from the traditional 2D to 3D environment were just a few of the points that were brought up. But I'm hoping that you and the audience can see that uh, the comments, I think, were very, very complementary to what was brought up by the C uh, GIOs and the CDOs. Uh, and this is a ripe opportunity now to take the discussion to the next level. So I'm going to turn it back over to uh, Nadine, and hopefully we can have some discussion uh, amongst us before time is out. Yep, sounds great. Thank you, Sai, and thank you, Mark. Uh, I think um, you've covered it all. Um, we're happy to share more if anybody needs more, but we captured the comments uh, from the, the federal and from the industry as well along, of, you know, these sort of axes, standards, policies, inventoring, partnerships, and leadership. And I think what bubbled up out of all of that is this uh, theme of, um, you heard it, national governance structure. Uh, we heard innovative governance structure. Um, essentially trying to do a little bit more and something a little bit different as well to contribute, engage, share, mobilize around everything that we've heard, including everybody, uh, federal, local, regional, tribal. So what we're doing, uh, this team is actually organizing a, a, a closed workshop on September 30th with uh, some uh, representatives from the federal GIOs and the state GIOs, as well as local representatives and tribal representatives to dig a little bit deeper into this concept of national collaborative governance structure for the NSDI. Um, and uh, I would say stay tuned uh, because uh, this is, uh, again, this is, you know, I call them step zeros. We're not even at step one. So the step zero is we're laying the foundation uh, to get enough meat, I think, to engage in a more meaningful, deeper conversation about how we, do we move forward in terms of this, you know, this collaborative, I like innovative, actually governance uh, model for the NSCI. Um, so let's open it for uh, questions, comments. Uh, I will stop sharing so I can actually see you better. And um, I was uh, instructed by Molly, who I think Molly, Ashley, kudos to you. I think everybody that Jenna and uh, um, you know Frank and the team, Thank you for everything that you're doing on the on the back end. Um, so yes, the slides will be available. And I was told that uh, you know if anybody from the virtual world, <laughs> so we're talking metaverse now. Uh, if anybody from the virtual world, you know, has any questions, we can give them priority, and then we can move on to the room. And then I assume that Frank and Sai can you know moderate. So, um, so this is a question from uh, Shia. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. For those of us who are newer to this, can someone clarify the differences between a federal model and a national model? I think Sai, to me, you explained it best when you gave the examples about the addressing and the parcel data. I was gonna ask Ivan, but okay. <laughs> And Ivan will ask Mark, and Mark will ask Frank. And <laughs> Personally, Ivan takes all of my uh, ribbing uh, very nicely. <laughs> well, most of it. Yeah, I mean, right now, what we have is a federal model. So the FTDC is in the lead. They're codified as the governance structure for the NSDI, codified in the Geospatial Data Act. They've been uh, you know, authorized by executive order since 1993. So that's our governance structure right now. A national model, a national governance structure would mean that all of the different sectors, counties, cities, states, tribal, higher ed, private sector would have, hopefully I didn't miss one there. Um, I always like to include regional government, but um, would have a, an equitable seat at the table in a national governance model so that they are all represented. And we're and we're all, you know, we have an equal say. That's what I mean by an equitable seat at the table. So for voting, for deciding what the standards are gonna be, which we pretty much got, you know, an equitable seat now on standards, but deciding how the data is gonna be used, uh, how it's gonna be shared, et cetera. All the decisions that have to be made to have a national spatial data infrastructure, we need a national governance model to be able to do that. 
just um, a comment on that. Uh, I like the way you put that. It got me thinking the governance model would then follow the data life cycle because these are national uh, roll-ups in, in, in lots of contributions from lots of sectors. I mean, I said earlier that the, you know, the county assessors don't see the NSDI as something of use to them. They create data in their county. Um, some, some of them and sometimes they see a need for having, uh, knowing where parcels are in the counties around them. The states definitely have a need for that. This, nationally, we have a need for that from a public safety standpoint, from a mortgage standpoint. I mean, there's all kinds of value proposition, but that doesn't roll down to the county assessor you know, from, from a national perspective. So you've got to give them a seat at the table to have them have this make uh, sense to them and be of value to them. That's just one example. Many of the data sets come from the local level. So Ivan has to leave. Ivan, do you want to say a few words before you leave? Well, thank you. I'm very unfortunate, but sometimes my time is not my time, but I have a to drop off to do a call with my assistant secretary. But yes, I, you know, we look forward to, to continuing this engagement, looking forward to the workshop um, next week. Um, we have a, a deadline on this report by September 30th, so um, uh, a lot a lot to do in a short period of time. But, um, you know, I see this as the beginning and not the end of our conversations and hopefully an ongoing opportunity to collaborate. Um, you know, I, I didn't share much on the NGAC, but I think that the NGAC is pretty well grounded in the community, but that also is a huge mechanism for us in terms of um, how we um, communicate across the various sectors. And, um, but it's not the only one. I mean, so within the GDA framework, we have an opportunity to do things in sessions like this, where we can also organize and bring in other folks who are not part of that community um, to hear their thoughts as well. Um, but again, um, I wanna thank you all for an opportunity to be here today. And um, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to drop off uh, to speak to higher powers, but uh, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. So if, if I could um, just you know, echo what Ivan said. He, uh, the FTDC, I think, has done a tremendous job in creating linkages between, uh, of course, uh, the government, the federal government and state, local, tribal governments uh, in terms of bringing together the NSBI and inviting in the private sector through representation from groups like OGC and others. But when it, when it boils down to decisions, the government at that level has the voting power. And what we want to do at a national level is to make sure that anybody sitting at that table representing whatever interests that contribute to that national asset have the ability to vote and weigh in on that uh, outcome. And Frank, I think you're absolutely right. I think depending on the data sets, how they're collected, how they're rolled up, how they're uh, aggregated at the national level, that will then determine the governance process and the types of public-private partnerships that come together to, to create them, maintain them, and enrich them. Frank, any questions or comments? I, I think we're out of time. You know, Amy maybe can tell us if we are, but... Yeah, we, we are um, at the end of our time, uh, but uh, I would like to give opportunity for one, one comment, one question from the mics in the room. If we have that, I don't see anyone standing at the mics, so we must have done a fantastic job. And I am so grateful for you, uh, all the panelists, uh, for being here with us. And the collaboration is just, it's really, really um, energizing. So uh, thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Big hugs. <laughs>